Thank you, Julia. Uh, good morning, or oh, good afternoon for 12 minutes into it. Um, 14, it'll be uh, 34 years next week. Uh, that that my that I could call Ellie my my bride and my wife, um, so things are bustling along. Um, appreciate the opportunity to come and visit today. I want to talk um, what I've been working on a lot, and I think a lot of the media have heard me uh, discuss a lot about the unclaimed property program. You know, there's a couple things that um, that I've learned since being treasurer, and one one big thing was that the balance of the money that doesn't get claimed by the citizens of Louisiana on an annual basis is swept into the general fund and spent on just general uh, government. Um, in my research and um, seeing how this, uh, this cash comes in and what it is, I, I don't think the state should be spending it. I don't think it's the state's money, I don't think it's the legislature's money, and it's not the Department of Treasury's money. But it is the Department of Treasury's job to try and return this money. And I, I want to brag a little bit about the department um, because they've done an outstanding job of just sort of being open-minded. And we've looked at a few things, um, best case scenario across the United States. And what, when, when I tell you that our statistics are staggering, they are staggering. Um, last year, uh, this is my, I'm finishing my first full year in office. A first, my first full fiscal year. And um, the prior year, we returned about 32,000 checks to people across Louisiana. This year, as of today, we're at about 175,000. We've gone from 32,000 to 175,000. <clears throat> we've increased unbelievably. Um, and that's to a large help of the legislature last year. We had a bill um, passed that allowed us to, sh uh, to compare our data to the Department of Revenue because this money comes to the department because it's lost. And it comes from a lot of different ways, insurances and, and banks and stocks and securities and just deposits, a lot of deposits from co kids who went to college and left. And, Mom and dad paid the deposit and they didn't know it and, and then the deposit got sent to the state. Could be payroll checks. So it comes a lot of different ways. But um, so last year we worked on some legislation to create a revolving loan program that passed the legislature, I think almost unanimously, and the governor vetoed it and in the message it talked about not having a revenue fund, a revenue stream. Um, which we did, um, but, but since that time, it gave me some, some time to think about the revenue, and, and, and then we got to a situation back in September where we owed $20 million to the citizens of Louisiana, and we only had a million dollars in the account. So we had to wait till the end of the year to get enough money so we could send out 82,000 checks. So, um, and I, I told somebody this morning, trying to give you a comparison of what, what, what's it, it's an equivalent to. And it's like going to the bank with a $100 check and the bank telling you, hey, come back and see me in 90 to 120 days because I don't have the money right now. So this, this trust fund, this bill, will actually take the, the, the money, put it in a trust fund to where government cannot spend it. It will allow the department to, um, to give back whatever it needs to give back. Um, but it will, it will basically stay in that trust fund, whatever it's not given back. And then we're going to invest that money through another piece of legislation and take the dividend, just the interest, and put it in, in a revolving loan program. Uh, I suggest that it's used for infrastructure across the state. I think everybody knows we have a little bit of an infrastructure problem. And more so, we have a funding, funding problem. Uh, the states of Georgia, uh, South Carolina, uh, Georgia saved their uh, municipalities across their state this year about $53 million in interest. Um, so I believe very strongly in this, in, in this idea. Um, it's a common sense thing. Um, it's not very difficult to understand. The only people that are opposed to are the people who, who are involved in state government. Uh, we have gotten tremendous support from legislators. Uh, from the public, 
Um, so I would ask that uh, everybody gets behind it. It's not you, you don't have very have very many opportunities to create a savings account. You know, and government typically likes to spend everything it gets. You know, unlike what you and I can do. But this this would allow to create a, a savings account um, that would be here 20, 25 years from now. And our model shows that 25 years from now, could it, it could have over 100 million dollars in the account. So. That's my main message today. I can talk about a lot of things. Um, I know they said speak for 15, 20 minutes, but that's all I got. So uh, uh, there's a lot going on at the department. There's a lot, obviously uh, we're in session, so there's, there's a lot going there. There's some, some bills certainly that I support, but uh, I'm very willing to take some questions. Yes, ma'am. So the question is, does, does this leave a hole in the general fund? This bill is a constitutional amendment, so the, the, the voters will get to decide whether they believe this is their money or the state's money. Currently, it goes into the general fund, and it averages, I think, uh, I think this year it's only going to be around $14 million, um, and, and it could be less than that because we, we, have, we have identified some people that gets owed some significant money but we're working on the legalities of it, so it could be a lot less than that. Um, so it will be, won't be next year, it'll be the year after that. So, I mean, you can look at several things. One, um, we've had two surpluses in a row, um, so it's very easy to back this money out. Um, but I, I start with this argument, I say argument, this belief, that I'm willing to go pretty far to tell you that, that the state shouldn't, be, shouldn't have been spending this money. Now, they've been doing it since 1989. Um, and right now, the state owes the unclaimed property program $852 million. Okay, so this bill doesn't address what's owed. This would be moving forward. I think it's the right thing to do. Uh, no matter whose opinion, it's the right thing to do. Uh, you, if you read what I read and you know where the money's coming from, I don't think um, if your husband left you twenty thousand dollars in a uh, in a, uh, a life uh, insurance policy that you didn't know you had, and the, and, the, and the state can't find you, I don't think the state should have the right to spend it. Uh, that that to me is morally wrong, and uh, this bill would fix that. Yes, sir. Yeah, so the program's like 32 years old or so, um, uh, and Kennedy was the treasurer for 18 years. Um, quite frankly, it wasn't something on my radar as a legislator. Um, you, you just, it, the, the money sort of just got um, thrown into the mix with everything else. The only thing I was aware of is uh, what would happen on a monthly basis because we used to get a little report on who in our district had money. Um, so. Uh, the, the, the hit, at some point in time, the money started getting put into the general fund, the state general fund. And my research and my, my, my I'm not a lawyer, as you know, um, but uh, what I read, it says the state's the custodian. Now, um, I don't think you have to go very far to understand what custodian means. I don't think a, a custodian spends the money and tells you, see you later. I think you'd have a, I think you'd have a little issue in court. So um, moving forward, um, I, I, like I said, it'd be a constitutional amendment, so it'd be in a 19-20-21 budget. Um, they'd, they'd have some time to wean off of it. And, and some of that money right now, about 15 million, going back to your question, uh, is being used to pay a, um, the bonds for the I-49 construction. Um, moving forward, this infrastructure revolving loan program could be used for something like that. But it's going to take a while to build that up. Anybody else? Yes, sir. My father left behind three shares or so of ITT stock that I would like to claim just for the heck of it. But 
couldn't the process be streamlined a little? I'd have to produce all kinds of documentation. And yes, sir. Even uh, notarization. Right. Yeah so, yeah, so stocks and securities are a little different, but I can tell you this. So the question is, can we, can we make it an easier process? I would tell you this, going from 32,000 checks a year to 175,000 checks, we have streamlined the process so much so that we're working overtime and we can't get caught up. You know, I, I need 20 more people on this staff just to, to, to catch up. So I would tell you that they've done a great job of, of, of doing exactly what you just asked. When it comes to a couple of scenarios on stocks and bonds, and when, when you have a relative that has died, uh, and, and you have multiple siblings, that's when we get in a little situation when somebody walks in and says, oh, my dad left that $35,000, and uh, me and my siblings want it, and nobody has the proper paperwork. Uh, and one sibling wants to come in and get it, and there's, there's some legal grounds that we have to follow. But um, if, you, if you want to give me a call to office, um, we, we, what I've told my department is just we need to use some common sense. It's, if it's not against the law, and the law doesn't prescribe or describe how do you get it, then let's use our common sense on how we get uh, this money back uh, delivered. Because like I said, it's not my money, it's yours. I'm going to do everything I can to get it back to you. Yes, sir. Explain the process in which you know, your average resident goes about seeking the unclaimed property. Right. What do they have to do to get that? So the question is, um, uh, how, did, how does this regular person go about getting their money? It's very simple. Um, go to latreasury.com. Click on unclaimed property and follow the, follow the directions. You can actually sit there and surf it and punch your family, your siblings, your mom, your dad, your great-grandmother, your aunts, your uncles, and just, you can sit there all night. All your friends, that won't tell you how much money it is. It will just tell you that they're in our system and they have some money. So what, what we're trying to um, fend off is the information and the data sharing of, of the general public uh, because I do believe it's private data. So when you go on there, it, it tells you basically if you have under or over $100, I would tell you if it's over $100, we recently had a lady this year and um, uh, in this fiscal year that had $2.3 million. And all it said was you had over 100. So you just never know. But look, we just had a very successful weekend Saturday in New Orleans where we gave back $491,000. Um, had over a thousand people come out. Most of those folks had already checked the system and knew they had something in the system. But we had at least four or five walk away with more than ten thousand dollars. And somebody on my Facebook page, how does somebody lose ten thousand dollars? Well, it happens pretty easily because um, uh, husbands, wives uh, who are at work might buy a special deal on a on an insurance policy, and they did it thirty years ago, and and then they moved and they lose the address and guess what, it's lost. And it happens a lot more than what you think. And that happens with stocks and bonds and this young lady, um, these were royalties from, from oil and gas and she just did not know the dad had it. And um, I, mean, I don't know how you lose $2.3 million, but you must have a lot. But uh, it's really, and it really happens because of lost addresses. People on my Facebook page, well, why don't you just send it to them? Well, we do. We have to hire national companies that, 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 that dive into the data and try to find you. And I think as technology improves, I think most of y'all would agree, you're not going to be able to hide. Uh, I think they're going to know exactly where you are. So, uh, but right now we have to do, it's, it's almost like having private eyes, private detectives out searching information to find you. And we use these programs, these national companies, that um, take, take our information and, and try to find you. And they typically have done anywhere between 27 to $30 um, million dollars a year. This year we're gonna do close to 50 million. When you think, Rachel, around 50? Yeah, we're at 44 or so now. So we're, we're, we're on a record run right now. Yes, sir. Somebody called me the other day Yes. Okay. I remember it used to be like this a long time ago. People just walk up to your building, right there on, I think it was on, uh, on is it on, uh, on, on, on Main Street, with their identification as to who you were, and somebody would tell you everything you need to know about what it is that you got. 
Yes. And you can even get the money the same day. Does that process still in place? You, yes. The process is exactly the same. The only thing that can't happen is um, we don't print the checks. So you go in, you walk in, you sign a document, a check will be in the mail within a day or two. But I mean, within five work days, you're going to get your check in the mail. You know, so you can walk in, and I encourage people to come to the department, um, come to the state capitol. We're in a capital annex right across the street from the state capitol, and uh, we have a window set up, everything where you can come in and give all the information. You can call our office, but the best way to do it is online, and the phone numbers are on there. And look, we're not perfect, and we can certainly improve. And I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm hell bent on improving it. I, look, like I said, this is not our money. Uh, my job is to get it back to you. You know, so I'd fix a lot of other things if you put it in my control, but I only have control of this program. But um, we're going we're gonna to use some common sense, and uh, we're going to get more of this money back to you. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, so the question is, do we do, deal with real property? No, we do not. We only deal with cash, and stocks, and bonds. Um, there is a bill right now in the legislature that, that I learned about at a, at a conference that I went to earlier this year uh, where we're going to take control of military medals and documents. Uh, that, that get lost um, at the bank or credit unions or wherever, safety deposit boxes. If they get lost, we'll take control of them. And as a military veteran, um, I heard that program is, is run someplace in another state. So that bill's making it to the legislature right now. But other than that, the only thing we deal with is paper and cash. Now, some states do, do, do real property, but we don't in Louisiana. I think they'd run me out of town if I took on that task. Yes, sir. Uh, Treasurer Schroeder, as chairman of the bond commission, uh, do you have some suggestions as to some cost-saving measures that the bond commission could possibly implement? I think from a, so the question is, can, can I implement anything as chairman of the bond commission to, to, to save money? I, I'm assuming um, that, that you know that most of the business before the Bond Commission comes from, pri uh, not private, but mostly 99% comes from public entities. Um, what, what, what I can do from, from a saving standpoint is make sure that we have a check the box, uh, cross the T process that doesn't cause you as an administrator from the parish to go through, jump through more hoops than you need to. So I've tried to make sure we have a very streamlined process that's, that's easy for you to get through, um, that once you check the box and cross the T, that you move on through the process. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, well, Go ahead. You want to follow up? Well, I was, uh, two times I had addressed the bond commission about the interstate bonds. Yes, sir. Yes, no, that's a, that's a good point. Um, and, it, it, and it's a follow-up to the same question um, about a cost savings to the entities that are coming beyond, before the Bond Commission. You know, Louisiana's unique. It's one of the few states that even have a Bond Commission. And before a local municipality can incur debt, it has to come to the Bond Commission to, to get uh, permission. And when I say permission, you know, the Bond Commission, I don't have a bunch of bankers sitting up there on the third floor, uh, but they are um, looking over all the documents and all the paperwork for these loans. And, um, and we've paid a lot of attention to fees and, and um, you know, how that whole process works. And, um, you know, I, I think most of you know, 
you know, the economy in Louisiana, especially with some of these municipalities, aren't doing very well. Um, uh, there's, there's, when I first took office, there was one uh, city that was under a financial advisor appointed by the state. Now we're, we're, we're looking at double digits. So I think uh, once session's over, and I have some time to sort of, as everybody's pretty busy right now, I'm gonna convene a, a work group to look and make sure that, we're, that, that we have, and I, I did talk to the legislative order about it last week, <coughs> because they, they oversee that program um, to see what we can do to make sure we're dotting I's and crossing T's before we allow an entity to get a loan that really can't afford that loan. You know, and, it, and, and that's, that's very important because at the end of the day, who backs up that, that municipality? You know, and I, I would tell you the, the taxpayers of Louisiana ultimately could be responsible. I don't know if they'd be responsible for it, but as somebody described to me one day, what do you do when your kids get in trouble? And not, not to compare the municipalities and kids of the state, but the, but the municipalities come to the state pretty quick when, we have a, when they have a problem. That answer your question? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, since he brought up Yeah, I, I'm, I know the bill's out there, and um, but I'm, I'm not. I think it passed the House. Um, that's represent, Rep Representative Miguez's bill, but I, I don't know. You know, I'm not following it particularly. Yes, sir. What's the current state of the state's bond rating? Yeah. Is it improved? Yeah, we have improved some. You know, the the the, the bottom line to the to the, the rating companies, and, and I could talk about this for a while, I, I know y'all don't want to be bored with all this, but you know, um, I think everybody knows we've got an election coming up in October, and I'm, I'm basically going to serve for almost 20 months or so, and that's something that I want to have great discussion about on, on the ratings, and you know, we pay for these ratings. Um, we also pay for a lot of them, and I don't necessarily think we, we need to have three, uh, but we rely heavily on a financial manager out of New York. Uh, that's that's been in state that's worked for the state of Louisiana for a while, um, but at the end of the day, the the in my opinion, the rating companies don't really care how we get the money. They just want to know we have money to pay our bills. I'm very worried about how we get the money. Um, so I, I have a whole different mindset on on why our ratings are the way they are, and whether they should be up or down, and it's different than than what the rating companies are now. You're not paying for my opinion, but we are paying for theirs. And, um, you know, Louisiana set up pretty, pretty well when it comes to paying its debt. In fact, uh, the, bond, the bond debt gets paid first by law, no matter what happens. And I, for some reason, the, the, the rating companies sort of bypass that, you know. But that, that's something that, I, that I'm looking forward to getting into. If, I, if I'm fortunate enough to serve another term, but, but the rating has improved some. Um, uh, we, we, we got some great ratings back on, on our Garvey bonds, which is the first ones that the state of Louisiana did. Um, and our rating on those bonds were as well as anyone done in the country, uh, if I recollect. So but that's definitely something I want to work on moving on in the future. Um, you know, at the end of the day, the state of Louisiana's rating is the same way your rating is. If you go buy a house and you go mortgage, going to get a mortgage for your house, the better your, the better your debt and the better you at it paying your bills, the better your rate's going to be, right? It stays the same way. The difference is between the state of Louisiana and how you run your finances. Um, you know, it's one of the reasons the, the country has problems is that when someone makes a little bit more money, the first thing they go do is spend it on something that reoccurs. And then something happens with their job or, or whatever, and they don't have that money, and guess what? They got a house too big, they got a car too, car note too big, they can't afford it. The state's doing the same exact thing. Um, as soon as they get some extra money, they, they go buy bigger things. And uh, that's a problem. And that's one reason why, I, in my opinion, that our rating uh, stays that way if we would 
if we would get some extra money and pay down some of our debt, uh, the rating companies would like that a lot. But at the end of the day, they just care that we have the money and don't really care that we just uh, passed legislation last year for seven years that's going to raise $3 billion in taxes. I know that was a long answer, if that was even an answer. Back to the, the question of the small municipalities that are financial difficulty. Is there a process that you can use by which they can like, go through the claim bankruptcy? You know, the, so the question is, can a local municipality claim bankruptcy? I'm not sure. But, but it's, it's definitely something that's on my radar, and it's something that myself, the Attorney General, and the State Auditor who sit on that committee are gonna sit down very shortly, like I said, probably sometime after session, and start exploring this because it seems to be getting worse. Uh, we, and when you go from one to 11, um, uh, or, or somewhere in that discussion, that's a problem, and ultimately, uh, some legislators and some folks have looked to the state to pay that bill. And, and I don't think it's fair, to be, be honest with you, that you, the taxpayers, pay for someone else's debt because they didn't manage their, that town properly. You know, so those are going to be some tough, dis tough discussions moving forward. But I don't know if there's a, a, a way, to, honestly, that a, a municipality can file bankruptcy. But it's a, let me tell you, it's a discussion we need to start having. I mean, the state right now is paying for water bills, um, paying for water, not the bill, but they, in essence, they pay in the bill, um, uh, running some water systems in the state. I mean, we got, we got some problems, and it's not getting better. It's only getting worse. So those are all some discussions that we need to start having soon. Yes, sir. Uh, for the municipalities. So the question is, can you get insurance to cover that, that problem? You know, in, in a business where you can almost buy insurance for just about anything, um, I'm not aware of it, but that's a, that's a good question. Uh, my staff sitting over here, we're going to write that down. And when we, when we have our powwow, we're going uh, we're gonna, to we're gonna ask. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, you know, the, 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 the crux of the problem is, is, is the infrastructure crumbles and you have, a, you have population movement. Look, Louisiana has less people living in its state this year than we did last year. So what's happening? They're either moving out of state or people are moving from the rural, rural towns to the more populated towns. And that's leaving behind infrastructure that needs to be paid for. It leaves uh, retirement benefits behind that need to be paid for. So it's, 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 it's basically a lack of number. And, and it's hard to re just reverse that trend. So you know, we're those are all things that we're going to have to sit down and have a real conversation about. Um, you know, there's, there's, you know, we have to pay for these financial um, uh, managers to go into towns. Because what happens, this happens by the court of law. You go into court, the, the, the judge appoints these financial managers in charge of the town, and they go in and take over paying the bills. The mayor doesn't get fired or the council doesn't get fired. They're just relieved of all financial duties. But why do you have to hire these financial managers? Why don't you send your own people to the property? Well, they're not going to go work for free. Well, whether, the, this, whether I hire you as a contractor to, to pay you to go do it, or I send somebody off my staff that I pay to go do it, somebody's got to go do it. It's the same. It's one and the same. Whether I pay a contractor or I, pay, I hire people inside my department, I, in my opinion, we're going to get a, uh, uh, you can go hire a professional expert who, who deals with that on a daily basis. They, they literally go move into town, and, and they, they got to go to the office every day. You could. Right. I don't. That's pretty much what's happening now. So, it, so it's either a uh, state employee that you'd pay to do it, or you hire a contractor. I bet the state probably saves money. Hiring a contractor. Am I, I am I done? Back to unclaimed property. Yes, sir. I 
know a lot of uh, elderly people probably are going to use the internet. Is there still plans on a regular basis to publish their names in the paper like it was done for a long time? Yeah, so the question is um, for the elderly, how do they uh, utilize this unclaimed property program? That's one reason we did what we did this weekend. Uh, we just had, um, and I would tell you, now that you say that, um, the great majority of people that came to the mall on Saturday in Jefferson Parish were elderly. Um, I would say probably 95% of them. Because I, at times, I talk to every single person in line. They either don't have computers, they don't have iPhones, several people had the old fashioned kind of flip phone, you know, they don't have access. So um, they were coming to see. Or somebody called them, a sibling called and told them, hey, your name's on this website. So, um, so yes, um, we will continue to do that. It was my first time doing it. It was an overwhelming success. And you don't do them for, for free. Uh, probably cost about 50 grand to put one on, but we gave back $491,000. So um, it's, it's budgeted for within the, in, the, in the budget every year. Uh, uh, the former treasurer used to do them around the whole state, um, but I was looking at a pretty significant um, uh, deficit last year in my department, and I, I needed to pay for other things. Um, but the, 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 we, we will publish annually in a newspaper. Uh, we're pushing hard that they put them on the websites, uh, the newspapers do, uh, because this, the, we're doing everything we can. And believe me, if anybody in here has got an idea, I love ideas. I love ideas. So if you have something that you think we, we can utilize or some technology, we're all ears. Okay. Yes, sir. Back real quick to the bond issue. Is there a particular area in the state where you have more municipalities that are insolvent at this point? Is there one particular region? You know, I mean, typically it's more rural. It's more rural where they're having trouble with infrastructure, water and sewer. North and south? Um, you know, most of the, you know, that you say that, you know, they sort of spread out. You know, I'm not going to say it's down south, up north, but it's sort of spread out. I don't want to pick on anybody, but, you know, I recognize it's a problem. And I think, the, I think you expect me as your treasurer and, and other leaders to, to recognize where the problems are and try to address them. And I don't know if we, I, you know, a lot of these things you can't address without having legislation. So just because you identify a problem doesn't mean you, you don't need a legislature in, in, in session to, to help fix it. But it's something that I'm going to look at very hard. It's on our, our sort of punch list of things to do. Oh.